now try uh, we will try to uh, see uh, how WinDBG works internally we will see the kernel module part of it um, why WinDBG? Because uh, WinDBG generates many events like uh, I/O instructions. It also uh, has uh, some external interrupts for different functionalities and CPU exceptions, uh, like other applications that contain a driver. It also has a user mode part and a kernel mode module or a kernel mode driver. And it's also not open source, and a lot of juicy stuff is buried into this. Uh, debugger and it helps us discover how debugging mechanism works in windows another factor is that you cannot uh, debug WinDBG by using the WinDBG itself for example you cannot set breakpoint on the uh, routines of the WinDBG because it will break the WinDBG uh, and uh, HyperDBG itself is also uh, built with the help of WinDBG so here's our method methodology. Uh, first, we're gonna uh, perform some kernel mode in investigations. We will avoid intercepting breakpoints by WinDBG and uh, by HyperDBG. And also we will ignore the debugger and disabling uh, event pauses of the WinDBG. Then we try to trace breakpoint ISR interrupt service routines by using the track command of the HyperDBG and we will detect where the uh, WinDBG tries to execute a, an RD, uh, the RDMSR uh, instrument command by using MSR read command of the HyperDBG and we try to modify uh, results and sniff the data uh, if, uh, of the uh, WinDBG and will change the process space and trace the call stack and find the process name and where the uh, process name actually exists for some commands that are used uh, for uh, in WinDBG. So let's see, let's uh, see, I uh, try to connect to this debugger again uh, the thing is if you just uh, simply uh, pause uh, uh, WinDBG then Uh, it, it executes a breakpoint instruction let's just let me show you what happens uh, if uh, i press uh, uh, windbg uh if i pause windbg let's continue the debugging i i will pause the WinDBG, but nothing happens. WinDBG won't get the execution. Uh, this is HyperDBG that gets the execution because generally HyperDBG uh, is set as a hypervisor uh, um, debugger. It has the priority and gets the breakpoints before WinDBG, so it won't reinject the breakpoints into the debugger, and uh, WinDBG will never get a chance to pause the system so i try to continue it and nothing happens everything just runs uh, in order to uh, uh, to avoid this problem uh, or this is not problem actually if you want to change the behavior or if you want to pass the breakpoints to the uh, to other debuggers we could use test breakpoint off in uh, HyperDBG and a node uh, from no uh, the breakpoints will be reinjected into the guest debug. Uh, so if again I want if I want to reintercept this, yeah, you can see that a uh, node we can intercept the execution by using WinDBG. Uh, <clears throat> so this is uh, this is uh, why we have this command. Uh, uh no uh we, we also have uh, some other function uh, functions uh for uh for uh, 
like uh, preventing wind division from working like uh, for example if you just see uh, the disassembly for how uh, wind dvg um, intercepts the execution or pauses the execution you can see that there is a function called uh, nt uh, dvg breakpoint with a status we have the same function here in hyper dvg nt dvg breakpoint with a status we could simply ignore it and and if we just ignore this function you can see that uh wind division will no longer able uh to work i just try to come uh continue this debug get the uh, name of function here let's uh, go to another uh, uh, tab I, I set a breakpoint and an EPT breakpoint here. I will try to just ignore the execution of this function. This is some of the tricks that we can use in a hyper DVG to ignore the execution of some function. It's a really a uh, useful uh, trick most of the time uh, because, for example, we want to patch the program in a way that we are able to do some some other tasks. For doing this, we have to simulate the execution of a ret instruction. Uh, so generally, uh, a ret instruction changes the RIP or the instruction pointer to uh, RSP uh, to to what RSP currently points on it. Uh, for it pops uh, the a uh, return address pop the return address from stack return address from stack uh, we also have to change the rsp we have to uh because we pop something from rsp we have to add uh eight uh, bytes to the rsp because this is 64 bit uh, uh operating system uh uh, just the stack and after that we have to this this is this is done we're we're good to go we change the address but just uh print some uh statements to say uh, intercepting uh, or uh, let's just say empty debug is ignored uh yeah that's it let's run this script to see what will happen to the windvg and make sure to not intercept we, we are currently executing this instruction so all the breakpoints are passed to the windvg uh windvg and we could just turn it on because uh, no we are no longer uh there's no need to uh, make it disable uh, make it in a disabled state so i run this uh, command and after that i try to run pause of the windy region and you can see that some interrupts go uh to the system and these interrupts uh, try to run uh this function and it uh, and hyperdivision just blocks the, this function it just it n doesn't necessarily mean that we cannot do it whenever we want to pass the breakpoints to the windvg it also works it here for example if we want to do it uh, you can see that uh, hyperdivg won't let this function to be executed it just ignores it and as you can see it's just a simple breakpoint instruction that tries to be run by uh, this is a simple trick we also have other options uh, we also have uh, some other options like for example if you see here in windvg uh, there's an idt command in the in the interrupt descriptor table we have we we talked about it in the previous parts we have a uh, debug trap uh, or fault and we have a debug breakpoints uh, let's copy it and it's interrupt number three uh, 
we could uh, ignore uh, the execution of uh, this interrupt uh, by using another uh, script or uh, by using the uh, exception command for example um, let's uh, clear uh, let's uh, let's uh, just first write some scripts and after that we can clear the comments uh, for this purpose uh, we can use the exception uh, command we saw it previously and in the exception command we are we are only interested on in intercepting uh, the third uh, exception which relates to breakpoints and in the S script part we use the short circuiting or the event ignorance uh, command uh, we'll try to uh, just ignore the breakpoint and uh, write something like a breakpoint is ignored and this, this is generally one of the ways that you can use uh, to uh, disable the breakpoints in all of the debuggers for example in x64 <coughs> dvg if you just want uh, x64 dvg not to intercept uh, the breakpoints you can use this s script and uh, x64 dvg won't able to intercept the breakpoints for example some malware some uh, softwares use uh, the breakpoint interception as a way to indicate that some debuggers are running so this is a this is an s, s script that can be used to ignore these uh, events so i try to just uh, write uh, breakpoint is ignored uh, so let's continue the debugging um, I try to remove all of the um, events. There's no events. And uh, oh, we didn't specify the parameter whether enable or disable the short circuiting. Yeah. No, I try to run. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, WinDVG while HyperDVG is also uh, turned off the uh, execution, it all, the uh, interception of the breakpoints. So all the breakpoints are passed to the WinDVG, but uh, you can see here that WinDVG uh, is not able, even even though we turned we turned. Uh, uh, the breakpoint uh, interception off, uh, but still WinDVG is not able to intercept the breakpoints and the breakpoints are ignored. Uh, I think you got the idea, that's how it works. Uh, no, let me see. The next thing that we're gonna talk uh, about it is uh, uh, we, uh, we, we first let's just uh, get uh, um, the execution. Let's just uh, find the module, uh, the modules that are uh, starting with KD, for example. Uh, th these are the modules here. But uh, let me see the help of this command. Uh, we're gonna see the kernel mode modules that is, that has some KD on them. So here we have KDNet that DLL KD zero two eight zero eight six. We have KD NIC and HyperDVG KD and KD zero. These are related to HyperDVG. Um, so probably these uh, drivers are responsible for debugging uh, the target uh, this uh, this debugging so let's try to just uh, see the symbols for 
stamps uh, hating it uh, here are the functions for this uh, DLL we have to invest investigate them later let's say with somewhere and uh, this one also should be related to what we want uh, and here are the functions that are probably responsible for sending the data over uh, the network because I use the network connection of the WinDVG. Um, yeah, I, I'll, I also save them in other press and let's just continue uh, the execution. So uh, first of all, uh, one of the ways to uh, know about WinDVG is to detect what will happen whenever uh, whenever a breakpoint is executed in the target uh, system. And generally, we knew that uh, whenever a breakpoint executes in the system, then the system uh, will uh, create uh, the, uh, the KI breakpoint uh, breakpoint trap. Uh, will be executed. This is an ISR interrupt service routine, which is responsible for handling uh, the breakpoint. Um, yeah. So in WinDVG, it's not possible uh, to put some breakpoints on this function uh, because it just a recursive uh, uh, recursive way of get, uh, like intercepting will happen with individual but it generally it's fine we can do the same in uh, hyper in hyper dvg uh, so let's just pass the breakpoints to the windvg so this uh, function uh, this ISR will get a chance to be executed whenever whenever the uh, WinDVG uh, um, just execute uh, whenever the WinDVG executes one in int three or breakpoint so I try to run it and instead of it I try to also put an EPT hook on this function uh, to intercept its execution we, we just want to find a way to just more explore uh, we try to explore the different areas of this divider different functions um yeah let's run it again i will go to windvg and put the breakpoint and you can see that uh, windvg it, it just get, lose the execution and everything is passed uh, to the hyper dvg we got we are able to put uh, some breakpoints on isrs this is a really unique feature of the hyper dvg uh, it's it's problematic if you want to put uh, breakpoints on isr routines and other debuggers uh, because uh, the isr routine are, are responsible for handling uh, for example this breakpoint trap is responsible for handling breakpoints and uh, we individual use these ISR, so it's not generally possible to uh, put some breakpoints here, but it's all it's possible in uh, hyper DVG as it's the hypervisor level debugger and it's also uh, handled differently. For example, we use some uh, routines that related to uh, that get, get intercept the breakpoint from hypervisor, so we are fine by setting breakpoints here. Uh, no, I uh, whenever I want to investigate some targets, I will use a track command to get some ideas of what will happen, get the executions, get the functions that are called. And after running it, we can see what what will happen if uh, one ISR uh, tries to uh, uh, execute on tar on my target machine. 
I always wait for some time to get some results. Okay, I think that's enough. Let's uh, copy uh, copy them somewhere so we can have an idea. And I generally might break the WinDVG because because we are just working with some of the uh, things that are related to uh, the way is pretty okay that, uh, for example, this function, uh, we intercept the execution uh, of WinDVG and WinDVG expects some uh, something from the um, from the debuggy to get so we'll break this debuggy and if just everything crash don't worry just connect to the WinDVG again I try to run it I'm not sure if it crashed or not in this state but I think it should crash no it, it didn't crash in this state so we're fine but just keep in, keep that in mind that when yeah, as you are just you know, trying to debug this debugger, then you have to expect some crashes here. I will try to remove all of the events and continue the debugging again. So let's go and see what happens uh, on the track on the functions here. First, we will see that key exception dispatch is called uh, exception dispatch on exception stack and uh, like it just tries to copy some uh, kernel frames uh, preprocessor fault processes fault and I, as you can see here, WinDVG tries to handle the debugging event by calling KD trap, and in KD trap, it uh, executes some juicy functions like KD enter, enter debugger, uh, uh, KE freeze execution, and uh, some HAL, uh, uh, hard drive abstraction layer functions i don't know the uh, how these functions uh what are these functions you can go and reverse it on some static analysis tools uh, uh, ki uh set debugger owner uh, this try to uh, enumerate next processor uh i'll send nmi it, it's also interesting that it sends some nmi uh, um, and uh, yeah, it seems that it stalls the execution in some uh, points and it just tries to recursively uh, run this stall execution processor. Uh, so here's how it just tries to halt the, uh, the system and these are the functions that we can use uh, to start or reverse engineer. Uh, no, uh, I know, for example, one functionality from the WinDVG, uh, one functionality is like uh, uh, RDMSR. For example, if I want to read RDMSR related to LSTAR, uh, this is just a simple uh, RDMSR, but I want to know where actually uh, WinDVG tries to read this MSR. So I will have a, a starting point of, uh, I know what to do. I know where, where should I look uh, to find some functions of this debugger. Let's continue this debugging. I try to put some uh, MSR read uh, uh, hooks on this uh, MSR and we'll run the debuggy in the debuggy I paused it and run this time yeah 
we, we grab the execution here and as you can see Windows just crashes uh, the, the system is working and everything is under control of HyperDVG but the thing is uh, Windows expects to, uh, to see some some commands uh, some uh, to receive some data from uh, this uh, target debugger and as we paused it here then it no longer gets the response so it just tries to send uh, some uh, retry packets to the kernel to get the execution back but it, it won't get any chance to do that so we are here to, let's just continue the everything in, uh, let's just continue everything in hyper dvg and after that probably we have to connect to the windows again because uh, we just crashed everything for the windows windows uh, doesn't expect this to happen uh, Actually, the uh, the way that uh, Windows tries to read this MSR is done into the kernel, not into the, the modules of the debugger. So NTKDP sys uh, read MSR is responsible for that. Let's see this uh, function how it works. Actually. As it's also seem there are some juicy functions here so let's uh, try to uh, find some anti functions that start with this kd yeah uh, these are also probably function uh, these are also uh, function that are probably related to the kernel mode to the kernel mode debugger let's see some of them uh i don't know uh kdp send wait continue uh, kdp write control ios space probably hv comfort in use these are some juicy functions that if you want to reverse all of them we could use uh, this information from here kdb print uh, since read ios space uh, yeah here are some of the functions that are probably related to the uh, kernel debugger part of the windvg now let's continue the Hyper DVG and probably WinDVG crashed. Let's see what happens. I try to. Uh, we, we got the execution for this MSR again. Let, let's just try to i just try to remove all of them and we got we, we will get no response probably crashes but there's something here i can see uh, yeah the system is still not crashed uh, yeah the system is working i expect it to be crashed let's do the same thing again I put then a uh, MSR read on this command and I will return to WinDVG, pause it and run this RDMSR, get the execution. Uh, let's just run some instructions to see what happened, what will be happen. Uh, ADP send wait continue. Uh, K KD send packet. Yeah, this one is a really juicy function. I I I tried uh, to search it for, for try to search for this function. Uh, it's one of the functions that are used for sending uh, the data. Uh, to the uh, 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 to out of the debug out of the debugger I, I see some very good resources and sys products they try to explain it and they also mention the definition of this function there is a kd send packet 
and which as first as argument it gets the packet type it gets also the first buffer second buffer and kd context as well as kd receive packet there are a lot of uh, information about this function in this uh, url uh, so uh, let's let's just continue uh the debug again i expect it uh, to crash yeah, it didn't crash yet uh, no yeah uh, let's run the msr again and this time i want to stop on uh the execution of this uh, kd uh, send packet uh see the parameters of yeah we, we are in, in in this function it's just called so uh just uh, it's a fast call calling convention so let's see the registers the first register r6 is the packet type based on this information you can also for example if you want to see the definition of a function maybe react os uh, can be a source of uh, can be a source that you can look at or uh, windows research kernel there are other sources for that the first uh, parameter is packet type and the second parameter is first buffer and the second buffer and uh, r6 rd uh, r6 rdx r8 r9 so r6 is 2 the packet type is 2 the first buffer is located here and uh rsi uh and uh, r8 is also 0 and r9 for the context is also points to a buffer to the buffer with kd context so let's see the first buffer um, for rdx which is the buffer that will be transferred uh, and and here as you can see uh, the msr address for uh, this uh, uh, if, if i if i want to read this address again or let's just do it with r rdx uh, this is the uh, probably where the WinDVG tries to send the information. Let's uh, read the RDMSR for uh, this MSR. And yeah, uh, the, the thing is that uh, we try to run it and WinDVG get, get some execution uh, and run, run that. So it probably. Uh, will crash the uh, hybrid widget but we have this buffer here let's uh, save the buffer here and connect to uh, this debugger again Again, I connect the serial device. Uh, going back to WinDBG. And uh, we connect to the debugger. Uh, okay uh the debugger is now running now let's uh i will try to pause it to just get the uh 
uh, address of this MSO. So uh, this is located here. And as you can see, we have this in, in, in our buffer here. And this is probably the results is sent here or maybe other uh, fields of this uh, structure. And as you can see, it's, uh, it, it is where it's not yet uh, encrypted because MinDVG uses, uh, uses an encryption uh, for transmitting data. So whatever reaches to KD send packet is not encrypted. And uh, also another thing is that we can also change the uh, uh, the value of uh, this MSR to something, for example, something else. Uh, let's try to do that. For example, I, I write an, an MSR read command just to, uh, Full the WinDVG about it. For example, if there's an MSR command to this MSR, uh, I will write an S script that uh, uh, changes the RDX to an to a invalid var uh, value like f0 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 and rdx to uh, 10 20 13 14 and then we just ignore the uh execution by short cir circuiting it uh, some messages i think this was msr plus uh, if i'm not wrong uh, Let's just try to uh, just uh, write the MSR. Uh, MSR is on R6 register. So, uh, so the result of uh, MSRs are available on uh, EDX, AX. So something like this uh, shows the result and we try to just uh, change them. Change. I I will write this uh, MSR and uh, also turn turn off the breakpoint in, in interception of HyperDVG. Continue the debug going. Well, to WinDVG, pausing it and try to run this MSR again. And you can see that this MSR is a uh, uh, read and uh, still we got a valid result. Probably we did something wrong here. Oh, we are just changing our disks and we're not, we ignore changing our RAX, so let's run it again. Uh, uh, you can see that we MSR is read and we changing it to F0, 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 10, uh, 20, 13, 14, which is an invalid value, which is of course an invalid value and uh, also uh, I pressed this. So, uh, let's connect to it again. 
I pressed a uh, control C on it, uh, which I which I was not supposed to press control C on Hyper DVG because it was in a pause state. So let's connect to the Win DVG again. Uh, Okay, uh, let me see my notes to uh, see what, what I want to talk. Okay, now um, let's go and uh, see some other commands of uh, WinDVG. Uh, for example, uh, Uh, let's let, let it just create the symbol table for us. Uh, it, I try to turn off the breakpoints. Uh, going back to WinDVG, executing some commands like Process zero zero and I want to see a list of processes. Uh, okay, uh, I there, there's some information here uh, like uh, process, e process, uh, PEB address, parent uh, address, uh, dear base or CR3 address, and image name. Uh, and another thing is that uh, in WinDVG, uh, if you want, for example, map this. Uh, uh, process to uh, e process, uh, and if you want to see the image for uh, image name for it, uh, you can see that it only uh, stores sixteen uh, bytes or uh, fifteen bytes uh, from zero to sixteen uh, uh, bytes of the MS of the image file name, so uh, it it shows something else here as the output for the uh, for the process zero zero command. So there should be somewhere else that uh, that this uh, process name is stored. I I knew where it's stored. Actually, I knew. Uh, but let's try. Let's try to discover it. Uh, let's try to discover where actually uh, Windy uh, Windy shows the process name because uh, we are uh, by uh, by using this. Uh, we are sure that this is not the field that Windy tries to find the process name. Let's try to investigate and find what what is uh, the location where uh, Windy Vision tries to uh, read uh, the process name. Again, I try to run process zero zero to see uh, the details. And uh, well, based on my knowledge, I know that uh, at the first uh, 
uh, uh, first uh, the a starting point of the E process. There is a K process and uh, uh, the uh, base address of for uh, uh, CR tree is located there. So let's just find some uh, processes that looks familiar for us. For example, OneDrive. I, I'm not sure. We have, we have two OneDrive processes. Let's uh, perform or uh, task is done. This process okay. Uh, <laughs> At the top of uh, e process, uh, there is one K process. You can see it here, PCB or K process. So I can of um, seeing it in uh, e process format i can also see it in k process and in the uh, k process there is a uh, one uh header for a uh, directory base yeah uh, plus 28 from the start of this uh, architecture and it's pretty the same in almost all of the versions of windows uh, this is somehow a constant, might be changed, but I think it's constant in uh, most of the versions of Windows. So let's just try to uh, investigate that. Uh, I will try to uh, see uh, in DQ format, I, I use this address at 28 to it. And you can see that this is the value that is located here. So let's compare it with the value that we see in uh, WinDVG. Uh, the directory base is located here. I, I, I try to um, put some modification. First, I want to modify the process name, uh, the, both the process name and the process ID. Uh, let's just uh, get the image ID. So it's OneDrive that exit here. Uh, I will add. Uh, I will try to uh, uh, EC this address plus uh, this address. You can see that there is OneDrive here. I try to modify it to something like. Uh, 41, which is as which just stands for A in hexadecimal capital A. So if I uh, look at it again, you can see that it's A and E drive that exit. And also I try to modify that address um, that we, we, we gained here for the base address, which is the address of the deer base to see uh, what we can uh, do with this address. For example, I try to uh, modify this address to something like um, F, 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 F. And uh, yeah, something like this. So let's execute that and see it again. Um, so I, I, I will try to run uh, the process zero zero again to find uh, the uh, to find this process to see whether it's changed or not um. Yeah, from here we can see that OneDrive is still OneDrive. It's not changed to A and E drive. So this is not where WinDVG tries to read the OneDrive. Uh, it probably somewhere else. 
and as you can see that the deer base is changed so uh, the deer base is changed and we have to find a way to see who uh, actually performs the access to this deer base so I, I in order to just not break everything I try to return this address to its previous state mm -hmm. I try to modify it to, uh, to the previous state I hope I won't break anything uh, And again, if I want to see this address, it should be uh, um, yeah, it's correct. Uh, so let's continue the debugging. Uh, but uh, know that we knew a location where WindyVG tries to. Uh, read some data from it and we can use the monitor command to monitor who reads from this address so uh, we have plenty of options here one of them is using EPT hooks uh, or using uh, sorry monitor for reads and writes and this address uh, plus this address uh, plus this address plus, plus seven and in and uh, just break the execution right something like this to break the execution uh, let's run that I will con yeah it tries to uh, read uh, so the swap context tries to read it several times so uh, probably it's not a good idea uh, to use it like this uh, or uh, we can also change the script to not intercept it in the case of this function so we have to write some scripts or not intercepting if RIP is not equal to this address then pause the execution uh, that's it let's uh, let's uh run that in the target system yeah. ke stack attach so this is also another um pointer that tries to uh, read the same structure so i add an and IP is not equal to this address. I hope Oh, it seems that there are plenty of functions that try to uh, read from this uh, address. So we, we are probably don't have any luck with this functionality, but let's just test it for the last time. Yeah, yeah, it seems that there is no other uh, 
functions that try to read this function so i try to get the execution again and this time use this process to and hope that we get the execution in uh, hyperdg so i try process zero zero again maybe uh the function that tries to read uh this value is also the same as the functions that are uh used here so so we didn't get it we we, we couldn't uh just uh we, we could we don't have any, any chance to uh intercept uh the exec the execution in this stage so probably this this not works let's test other um, possible options for example one of the things that we can do here in this stage is to uh, just intercept the uh, possible uh, the uh, functionalities of kd uh, send uh, send a packet for example uh, we knew that uh in kd send packets uh there should be some information relating for example to this base address to something uh from this uh, addresses should uh, should also be there so let's some uh simple ept hooks that try to uh hook the kd uh, send packet uh and in this kd send packet i try to run one script uh, the script simply tries to create some logs like print uh the parameters uh let's uh, make the parameters based on these values first buffer second buffer and the last one is kd context Uh, and it's on R6, R6, R8, and finally an R9. Uh, here's the case. Uh, for example, uh, we, we, we try to just find some values from these uh, buffers uh for example uh let's uh, let's uh search for some values like uh the process e process to find whether we can find uh the information uh that we want we, we can we can intercept the execution from where we want let's try uh, let's uh find, uh, let's write some uh random numbers to search for the bytes that are passed to this uh by uh, to this uh, function maybe this is okay we will test whether to see whether it's okay or not then we will put some uh breakpoints break, make some uh lines to separate them uh, 
and I, I try to search the buffer that I passed as first and second buffer to see whether we can get the uh, anything in the buffer but uh, in, for for this address anything that um, shows that this address is in the buffer so I write a, a simple for uh, where i is equal to zero and i try to run it until five land again i plus plus uh, and in the uh, for loop uh, if a quad word from rdx which is the first buffer equal uh, rdx uh, plus i was equal to this address then we will try to pause the hyper divider we will do the same for the second buffer because the buffer might be in the second buffer. We only need to change it to R9, R8. Um, uh, yes, let's go. Let's go to see what will happen, whether we can get the execution or not. I run it and said that it cannot resolve KDSent. I think KDSent packet was were somewhere else. It wasn't KDNet. I'm not sure. Let me check. Uh, KDSent packet. Yeah, yeah. Here is the, here. Uh, this function is in KDNet. I'm not sure whether it has some equivalence here uh no it's in kdnet so uh, i will return to the script uh, where was the script yeah it was here uh kdnet um Let's run the target. Yeah, we can see that it tries to communicate and send some buffers. Uh, uh, it normally sends some buff. What what happens to this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, it tries to send some normal buffers and let's intercept the execution here in WinDVG. Several buffers are also sent. And all of them are checked whether this address is available on them or not. Let's uh, run the process zero zero again. Uh, and you can see that uh, hyper that uh, which just sends the buffers here. We are currently sniffing the buffers. We could, we could also see the values. We could modify the values. We could do whatever we want with these buffers. Uh, I hope that this time we get the um, correct address. Yeah, um, here we were lucky. Uh, we got some uh, buffers here for uh, for the first one drive and the second. We have two one drive processes. Uh, this is uh, this is the first one, and we got the second one. And as we can see, the uh, hyperdivision triggered this event. Probably a pause uh, was executed, and now the uh, individual tries to reconnect to this debugger, but 
no we are in the right place we are in the middle of sending this the package relating to this process so no i i, I do somewhere here uh, windows tries to uh uh run uh windows tries to just uh get the execution so uh, we, we could use the track command or we could use some uh some commands like i uh to just get the execution to see what what would happen when these commands are uh this uh function tries to be executed so i just try to get some ideas about what will happen here Yeah, uh, we got these uh, functions. And uh, probably from here, they try to um, send the details. So uh, I try to just uh, run run them again for some times let's just let's just uh run them uh by using track command It seems that it tries to like get some uh, information from here. Uh, probably uh, from probably external resources or uh, running some loops here. As you can see, uh, this is where uh, uh, WinDVG tries to encrypt KD packets. It's the, 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 the name of the function probably uh, related to encrypting the packets. So yeah, here uh, here is how uh, WinDVG sends some uh, packets to to the target uh, system. Okay, let's uh, continue the debugging again. And get to see whether we get we get some hopes. It it again tries to transmit uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, buffer. Let let let's uh, tr let's connect to the debugger again. That's probably I think we failed in. WinDVG close WinDVG return to the first state also close HyperDVG I created a dump of these processes. Let's find some uh, OneDrive processes. Maybe this one. 
uh, let's copy that here and change it with our private process because this process might might be gone Uh, here I try to run this script again and of course disable the breakpoint interception uh, by HyperDG. So let's continue it and in the debug in the WinDG execute process zero zero. Yeah, we got something here. Uh, now let's see uh, the stack. We can find some something juicy. For for example, this KD send packet should be uh, called from uh, a loop that tries to send the processes, so that this function might be interesting. Um, maybe reading virtual memory. So let's try to remember that for the next time and continue the execution again. Here, I hope that individual continues its execution. Yeah. Now let's uh, set a breakpoint on this function. Actually, uh, the thing is uh, we should not use the BP command in this uh, stage because if we use uh, BP command, then uh, WinDBG will try to intercept the breakpoint as, as we allow it to intercept the breakpoint and it will break the execution. So just simply use EPT, you can test it. It will just break the execution. I'm, go I'm not gonna test it. We just uh, put uh, one breakpoint here uh, by using EPT hook. I try to remove that. Uh, put some EPT hooks here. Uh, continue the debugging again. Pause the debugging, and we reached to this function. Probably this function is. Uh, responsible for some of uh, so for managing some of the uh, events in WinDBG uh, and uh, let's just try to uh, let's just uh, run some track functions to see what will happen when this function is called so it basically tries to probably copy some addresses So uh, basically we see that a couple of functions are called here. Um, 
let's just let it to uh, execute more functions. Yeah, I think that's enough. Let's see some of these functions, probably in the same tab. Uh, here it calls uh, KDP uh, copy memory chunk, KD uh, uh, NTMMDBG copy memory, NTMI uh, DBG uh, copy memory, uh, k is the user va access allowed so this function uh, copies something from the memory this function also performs the same copies something from the memory and let's see if we find anything any other thing uh, uh, that is interested for us uh, interesting for us mm is at least uh, valid ex this might also be a case might be interested, but as we have this uh, function and it's called inside this function, it's probably not important. Uh, again, we have something like copy from untrusted source. Let's copy it. And yep, the, there seems that there is no other function, and these are uh, for security check for the cookies so probably one of these functions are these functions are generally responsible for reading from the memory for example untrusted memories uh, it indicates that uh, it tries to read something from the memory that probably is available for the kernel or user i don't know let's just uh, put some ept hooks on these functions to see whether uh, we, we reach to something interesting or not we're gonna find where is actually the name of the process is located in uh, whenever an individual wants to uh, read them so basically i can create uh, an ept hook uh, maybe on this uh, function that is uh, located on NT. In the S script, uh, I try to uh, search whether I can find uh, something like, or let, let's just have find something like one drive i don't know what what is the uh, conversion of this one drive to hexadecimal format i think it uh, has some converters here uh, no it doesn't have converter for hexadecimal now, yeah yeah here it is it converts ascii to hex and uh, hex ASCII, so yeah. OneDrive, we're gonna find a, a process name for OneDrive. So I, I, I try to just uh, check whether some parameters uh, that are passed to this function contain OneDrive or not. We, we will check all of them. Uh, we start with R6 whether uh, a byte on rcx register starts with uh, 4f maybe which is which is stand for one o capital o and if uh, r6 plus uh, one actually uh, i believe that windows uh, uh uh saves everything in the kernel in in a unicode format so the second character should be zero but if if it just saves it in the ascii format we could also test that uh we, we could directly use 6e instead of zero zero but let's first check 
uh, the zero zero because it's more likely that Windows tries to uh, save uh, save it as uh, uh, Unicode format in, in, in the kernel. Uh, let's do that again and this time with 60. Uh, and I think that's enough. That's enough for it. Uh, I just try to pause it. And there are several other parameters. We could test them one by one. After that, uh, we would, for example, change this RCX to RDX to, to check whether second parameter may be R8, R9. Each of them just contains uh, these values. Let's uh, run this script. But beside that, uh, we can we could, uh, even continue uh, the execution. We just normally can. Um, if this uh, functionality is true, then uh, we could uh, write something like this function. Um, is called from RIP, which is equal to uh, this value and the address, this, uh, the address, the target address is here, uh, R6 and the S string uh, is as we assume that it's the Unicode, then we use WS here. So the first thing is RIP. The second thing is we are checking R6. So it's R6. And the third address is also R6. Yeah. Let's copy that for all of the commands. And yeah, I think. Um, we just uh, we have to uh, reconnect to the WinDVG. Uh, no, it's still running. No, we didn't crash anything. That's a good news. So let's run uh, these uh, commands and continue the debugging again. I try to uh, pause the debugger and see whether we can find anything or not. So it accesses some invalid addresses. We didn't check for whether the addresses are valid or invalid. Yeah, and we're lucky here. Um, these functions access to some one drives here. Uh, you, we, we can see the strings here. So let's just copy them somewhere else. Continue the uh, UID. Uh, So MM uh, DBG copy actually was responsible for copying uh, this data. Uh, <clears throat> probably uh, other uh, functions here were not responsible for anything or at least didn't catch anything. So 
only MMDBG co control was uh, doing something here. So we have these address uh, RIP addresses here, and this is one address that probably contains uh, OneDrive. This is also another address that contains OneDrive. Here is also another address. Um, so I think basically we have no, there's one other. So we have four addresses here that uh, contain uh, OneDrive. Let's uh, let's see whether these addresses are val valid or not. Uh, I tried to use HyperDBG to check them. So yeah, it, uh, the first address co contains a OneDrive. Let's check the second uh, address. This one is invalid, so there, there is no OneDrive here. So probably this is not where Windows wants to find uh, the process name for this. Uh, process let's check the second one here still we have another one drive and let's check the last one and yeah this is also one drive so i will remove this address and uh, try to uh, manipulate these addresses to uh, to see whether we can find somewhere uh, which is responsible for showing the memory address here in WinDBG. currently we have i think we have several one drives here we have several one drives here so uh several pro one drive processes so uh, at first, I try to change the first one with 41, which stands for A. So, the second one, so this, this should be like A and E drive. Yeah. And the second one, I will change it to 42, which should be. BNE drive. And the third one should also be changed to 43, which is CNE drive. Yeah. So let, let's just continue the debug, uh, the debug, I try to remove all the events uh, and pause uh, WinDBG again. I will clear it and try to query process again. Let's search for something like drive to see whether we, uh, yeah. Here you can see that we find where actually Windows stores the uh, name for the drive. For, this is the first address, A and E is changed to A and E drive. Let's see whether there are other drives. Yeah. And the second one is B and E drive. It's also changed. The second address uh, was. Uh, this and 
The third one is also CNE drive. And yeah, there's no other drive. So we find all of the instances where this S string is located in the memory. Uh, so, so this is the case, but the thing is, uh, if you just want to investigate, uh, about this address, for example, let's, let me continue a hyper DBG and, uh, like, uh, read some, some of the bytes before it, uh, maybe 20 bytes, uh, even more. 15 bytes in hexadecimal format. Yeah, you can see that uh, there is a pass actually. There is a pass, uh, and uh, uh, there, uh, this is a pass to some uh, URLs and uh, some hard drive uh, disk volume at uh, three URL, and this is the pass of it. So, uh, 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 if if uh, we change this pass, then the the result that is shown by uh, WinDBG is also changed. Uh, yeah, uh, but basically, based on uh, my previous uh, knowledge about Windows internals, I knew that uh, whenever there is a pass in. Uh, like uh, uh for for the uh architecture of the uh, e process uh, it it's located somewhere uh in let me let me find some structures here yeah uh uh it's not the image name here but i think it, it's somewhere in um maybe here is the audio process creation info and yeah there's a, a image file name here located here uh, which points to exactly this address so the address for this structure is uh, here. Yeah, uh, let's compare this address with one of these addresses that we get from HyperDG. Uh, uh, so it's generally. Uh, Probably we are not. No, this is not the correct address. Uh, the name is located. Uh, let's try to find it by using the structure itself. Uh, here we have SD audit uh, create press creation info. Uh, and it's also the one of the addresses here, so five eight. Uh, And the, the image file name, uh, I, I don't know the type of this project is a pointer here. Uh, so let's just see type of this uh, uh, structure. Uh, Maybe this. Uh, 
Yeah, here it is. So uh, this one is probably the start of this address because you can see that uh, these address are similar only. Uh, it's uh, it's low bit is different. So uh, this is the this is where actually Windows stores the name of the process and. and uh, we could we, we we did find it without knowing this knowledge we uh, reversed uh, windwg and uh, write some scripts to find uh, the location uh, of this uh, structure and uh, of this uh, string and we find it by using some some of the uh, uh, scripts uh, in hyperdwg yeah that's it so I, I try to put all of these uh, files, uh, all of these uh, uh, notes, uh, actually beside the files of the uh, 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 files of the, the tutorial for this part.